Hello, my name is Aaron Bartell, and this tutorial will show you how to generate the necessary XML instance files from a WSDL. Now, the times that you want to do this is when you're attempting to consume a web service and you need to understand exactly what the XML needs to look like that you are sending to the web service and what the XML looks like that you're receiving back from the web service, the XML you'll be parsing. Now, so with that, the first thing we need is the actual WSDL. Um, the WSDL is usually offered to you via a URL, so a remote web service um, will provide you with an address starting with HTTP, going to some site, and then ending in a .wisdl file. What we do is we take this, copy it, and we bring up an application called SOAP UI. Now this SOAP UI product is actually a free open source piece of software that you can download from SOAPUI.org. Go ahead and uh, download this one right here onto your Windows or Linux machine and then um, go ahead and start it up and you'll have this screen right here. So the first thing that we want to do is right click New WSDL Project and this is for a um, calculation price uh, WSDL. Note that we're not going to specify the initial WSDL right here. This is going after a WSDL file that would be on your hard drive. In our case we've got a WSDL that's out on the internet. So hit OK. Now I'm going to right click and add my WSDL from a URL. So here I'm going to paste that URL that, I'd, that I had copied earlier. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to tell it to create all the different operations. Think of an operation as uh, being equivalent to a an RPG service program's uh, sub procedure, and we're going to expand out all the different nodes down to the request one node. And if we double click on that, it'll open up this window. This is an instance, an XML instance, of what we are going to be sending to the remote web service. And at this point, we could go ahead and copy this up into a .tpl file on the iSeries in our templates folder and go ahead and modify it to uh, work how RPG XML Suite requires. So what that means is we basically be adding different variable data placeholders. and we'd uh, be adding sections. In this case it's going to be singular. We just only need one section. And then within our program that's acting as the client, uh, we'd update uh, those variables. So in this case item ID to have some value. And that could be a, an RPG variable or a, a DB2 field do the same thing for uh, the cust ID. Put another value in there. And then finally what we need to do is write out the section. Um, so in this case we called our section SOAP ENV. And we want to make sure to flush the buffer. So I'm just showing you this here in this editor. Um, in reality you'd be doing this in your RPG source member um, in the section where you're composing your XML. So that's showing you how to um, gain access to an instance of the XML request, but you also need to know what an XML response is going to look like. And you can do that by going back over here to the request one node, right clicking, select add to mock service, and it's going to ask you, oh it looks like you're missing your response. We go ahead and select yes, and we can call this uh, response one. And do we want to open the editor? Sure. So this is what the response is going to look like. Basically, it's got uh, one field. So 
So now um, we have an understanding of what the response XML looks like and could appropriately modify our RPG code to look for this particular value. That concludes this tutorial.